Reaction is pouring in after the indictment of Milwaukee Alderman Jeff Polinski. Today, a federal grand jury handed down three felony counts of mail fraud. The indictment says Polinski deposited $40,000 of campaign donations into his personal account, which he then withdrew from an ATM. U.S. Attorney Stephen Biskupic says Polinski improperly used campaign donations. The indictment alleges that... Time to play your game. Make your move. Do your thing. We gon' crown the champion right here on ESPN. Championship week continues. The Horizon League, a rubber match between the top two seeds. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, perfect on their home floor all season against the top seed Butler for the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps, and Jay Billis alongside. It's been a trend. The top two seeds meeting last night. West Coast Conference. Gonzaga had to go to San Diego. Toreros got the win and the auto bid. Similar situation. Does Butler need this win? Well, with Gonzaga going down, Chris, and you take a look, Jay, we know what happened when the other team goes down in Southern Illinois in the Missouri Valley Conference. Now, Butler's, like, got pressure to win this game, and it's tough to play Milwaukee no matter if it's the Bucks or Marquette and especially Wisconsin-Milwaukee. No question about it. I don't think that Butler can rely on anyone. They've got to get business taken care of tonight and win this game, get the automatic bid. They're a very good passing team. Mike Monsere, one of the best passers you will see. Joel Cornett can step out on the floor. That's going to be a nice matchup. Butler, a regular in this title game. Wisconsin-Milwaukee has never been in the championship game of any conference, including this one. Western Kentucky has the home court advantage against Middle Tennessee State. The automatic bid from the Sun Belt is coming up next. But now it's off to Milwaukee. Dave Revson, Bob Balvano, stand by for the Bulldogs and the Panthers in the horizon. Yes? Thank you very much, Chris. They are fired up here in Milwaukee. The home team looking to get to the dance for the first time ever. Championship week presented by 7-Up. It's the Horizon League Championship. The Wisconsin-Milwaukee Panthers hosting a Butler team that was the poster child for the mid-major snub last year. Tonight trying to take batters into their own hands. Here's how they got here. Both got buys into the semis thanks to their regular season records. Both survived very tight games, as you can see, on Saturday. Just moments ago, Panthers coach Bruce Pearl firing up his crew. Do you think anybody in this country's heard about UW-Milwaukee? There's not a soul that heard about UW-Milwaukee basketball. It's all about Butler basketball or Creighton or other teams. Let's go out and show the nation what UW-Milwaukee basketball is. Yeah. Yeah. They left Bruce for all here. So take a look at our Star Wars. He's got me fired up. I'm ready to guard somebody. These two guys, the numbers only tell part of the story. They're brilliant numbers in the semifinals. Clay Tucker, you see that 24.6 rebounds, but he does so much more than score. He's the leading assist man for the team. He's the career leader in steals. And on the other side, much the same for Joel Cornett. Great numbers, but he does other things as well. He's the leader in block shots. He averages three assists a game, and he is really a presence in everything they do. You watch him on the practice floor. You see him in the pregame warm-up. Very big presence for the Bulldogs. Wisconsin-Milwaukee is in the gold uniforms. Butler, the top seed in the white uniforms. We are ready to jump it up. Cornett is jumping center for the Bulldogs against Milky. Tipped around, and Butler's going to get it in the person of Darnell Archie, who gives it to Brandon Miller, and they will set up the offense. One of about 6,000 sets you'll see here from the Bulldogs. That's what they do, and they do it so brilliantly. Team that relies very heavily on the three-point shot. 37% of their points coming through the threes this year. Cornett misses right there. And now Tucker coming the other way for Milwaukee. And right away you see the difference in styles as Tucker hits, Bob. Uh, you also see the two go-to guys right away, Tucker at one end, Cornett on the other. It's going to be interesting to see how Bruce Pearl decides to defend Cornett when he gets it inside because he is a terrific passer. And if you run at him, everybody spots up on the perimeter. That's what they want. But he's difficult to guard one-on-one, -on -one, so we will see just exactly what the Panthers do. They get a turnover here. Butler turns it over. Fewest turnovers in the nation coming into this game. We told you about Cornette as we take a look at the lineups. Very balanced. Four guys in double figures, including Darnell Archie, who set the Division I record by hitting 85 straight free throws this year. Panthers also four double-figure scores in the lineup. Dylan Page averages more than 18, also leads the team in rebounding. This is Page with the baby hook. Uh, Bruce Pearl told us before the game, that's the guy who he's been so pleased with his progress, how far he's come, and he has given him some real solid numbers. He's playing very well at the best time of year. 
10th in the nation in field goal percentage. Milwaukee the early 4-0 lead. Cornette setting up on the blocks. They see that great passing Jay Billis alluded to. Good look. Couldn't get it to go. That was Lewis Curry, a guy who, despite the number, not really a three-point shooter's number, but he will shoot the three. And it's a, a very good three-point shooter. Now Jones for Wisconsin. Milwaukee misses. And we've got a foul on Curry down low. As we take a look at the coach's foul. That's a guy I know well, coached against Bruce for a long time. And to paraphrase Lefty Drizel, he can coach. He is an emotional leader and a very solid tactician. And there you see him before the game, getting the students into a frenzy as well. He wants everybody in a frenzy involved with his program. His daughter sang the national anthem, the whole Pearl family involved with a very big day for their program in the 107-year history, trying to make their first NCAA appearance in Division I. He has really invigorated this community. Bo Ryan kind of set the table here, then went to University of Wisconsin-Madison and leading the Badger program to all their success. And picked up right where Bo Ryan left off and actually improved on it. Now Page down low, misses the lamp. It's tipped in, though, by Milky, and he's going to go to the line. Yeah, but Tucker made the big-time play to start it. What great presence of mind as you get another look at it. Watch Tucker as the ball comes back to him on the tip. He turns the tip into a pass. He deflects it inside. Page misses, and that gives Milky the chance at what really wound up being the third opportunity on the tip and in a possible three-point play. Foul's going to go against Mike Montserrat. Notre Dame transfer his first, so Milky gets the three-point play, and Wisconsin-Milwaukee off to a great start, up 7-0. Well, they are a team of runs. You will see that in their stats. They've had games where they're down 16, and they're back up two. They put runs together. That is the nature of how they play. Curry has it blocked by Milky. Perhaps could have been a goal 10, but no call. looked like it came off the board, Dave. Now Frederick off the head fake, feeds it down low. And two more for Dylan Page. Well, we talk about runs. There's a run right at the top here, right out of the blocks. 9-0 Milwaukee. Archie gets fouled on the way to the hoop. Well, there's no question both these teams are very emotional. Todd Licklight is screaming for a goaltend. Officials coming over to talk to him about it as we get another look at Page. A lot of arc on that two-footer. <laughs> went up <laughs> about 40 feet in the air, but came out the bottom. That's all that matters. Sub already in the game now for Butler. That is Dwayne Lightfoot, a junior out of Louisville. Plays a lot of minutes for them. Plays about 23 minutes per game. So, the guy you're going to see a lot of. Archie was not fouled in the act of shooting. Oh, he was on the floor. So, that's why the Bulldogs are inbounding it rather than going to the line. And that's great news for Milwaukee because Archie never misses as we take a look at Todd Licklider. What gaudy numbers here. Look at these numbers these guys have. 51 and 10. A tribute to the coaches and frankly to the players. They've got seniors who have played for three different head coaches and they just don't miss a beat. Working around the perimeter, Montserrat. Good misses perimeter the defense. Three. Dave, they're flying at the shooters on the perimeter. Butler's going to have to get him to chase him a little bit. Whoa, that's deep. Tucker! <laughs> that's one that on the bench you go, huh? Hey, terrific shot. Clay, good look. Jones commits the foul on the press, but this is exactly what Bruce Pearl wanted. Watch where Tucker pulls this one up from. This is one, two, two strides over the midline. That's uh, not much. You don't have to check the replay to see that that's behind the arc. He is not a great percentage three-point shooter, Tucker. Just 29%, but boy, he makes some timely ones, and now he gets the steal. Another turnover for the Bulldogs, and two more points for the Panthers. It is 14 to nothing. Well, we said they play for runs, but I'm not sure even in his wildest dreams, Bruce Pearl thought his team would come out of the blocks, put a two-touchdown marker on the board. We've seen a lot of this guy. Tucker gets a hand on it, gets the steal. Gets the breakaway. Wise decision by Montserrat not to add insult to injury, if you will, and make it a three-point play. Time to regroup for Butler. The advantage for Butler is they shoot so many threes, they certainly could shoot their way back in in a hurry. The downside is they don't really want an up-tempo game. They don't play a high-scoring game. They only score 68 a game. They give up 59 a game. So 14-point lead, a little bit more formidable than a team that wants to play in the 80s, for example. 
Don't forget, tomorrow, Championship Week continues as the Conagra Foods Big East Championship begins. First round action at noon. St. John's taking on Notre Dame and West Virginia meeting Providence. Those are on ESPN. Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Bruce Pearl's trap is a one and done. They try and get a double in the corner. As you see, if they don't get anything, they fall right back. They'll play it a couple of different ways. One is a little bit more man-to-man. -man. One is more of a straightforward one 2 one one they're almost always one and done deals in the backcourt, and then they retreat. Montserrat, nice dish down low to Lightfoot, and that's the first two points for the Bulldogs. Well, this team's not going away. There's no question about that. Too good, too much character, too much senior leadership, but. Good high low, they get it to Milky. But they're going to have to find some answers defensively because they're not getting very many missed shots to rebound. Milwaukee is on fire. This press looks familiar. It's a very similar system to what Tom Davis ran for years. Bruce Pearl, 14 years as an assistant with Davis at Boston College, Stanford, and Iowa. I don't remember Tom getting quite that fired up on the sideline, though. Bruce <laughs> is a little more animated. Oh. Now another turnover for the Bulldogs. Again, the fewest in the nation coming in already have three. This is Page for three. In and out, Cornette the rebound. That might have brought down the house. That was halfway down. They forced 23 turnovers, did Milwaukee, in the game they won over Butler, the the game at their place. In the return match, not so fortunate, and they lost that game. So that is a bad trend for the Bulldogs to be turning the ball over early this evening. That was a season high for Butler. Cornette cannot get it to go. Page coming out of there with it for the Panthers. Tried to build on the 14-point lead. Milky again. Now they're almost getting arrogant. That was almost casual. Just came down throwing right in the gun of the defense. You gotta be careful. The emotion can only carry you so far. We're barely five and a half minutes into this thing. Eventually, you gotta settle down. And frankly, Butler's not able to settle down, Dave. Oh, they really aren't. Another turnover. Tucker, the three, way off the mark. It's a little bit over. Now, Bruce Pearl worked a lot yesterday on trying to get points in transition. He believes that he can take advantage of Butler's transition defense, but that's probably not the shot he wanted. Certainly not the result he wanted, but no, you're right. Sure. He does want to force step a little bit. That's the one area where he feels he's got an advantage. Brandon Miller, the long three, misses that one. That's definitely within his range. There's basically nothing out of his range. They're not getting any flow. They're not making him chase him to get good looks. Tucker gets it to go. Two more for Tucker, who already has nine. Yeah, he is trying to go out. Well, at least go out in terms of the uh, Horizon Conference with a bang. He won some more games. They win tonight. He'll ensure himself of that. Archie gets his first two. You still don't get the feel, though, that Butler's making Milwaukee react to them in any way so they can get the looks they want, those wide-open looks on the perimeter. It's been very much Butler on their heels, as you can see by the numbers. Milwaukee's taking 14 shots off. Yeah, those turnovers have really hurt the Bulldogs. Just eight shots from the field. Jones for three! Yeah, they just they just keep on firing. Good balance on this team. It's amazing. These two teams are so similar in so many ways. They both have great offensive balance. They both force more turnovers than they make. They both shoot a lot of threes. They both had great regular seasons. But the style of plays are so drastically different. And you're seeing that contrast in the first seven-plus minutes tonight. Very similar to what happened to Southern Illinois last night, just getting blown out early. We'll see if the Butler Bulldogs can make a comeback. Page gets called for the foul right there. That's going to be his first. We are going to take a break here in Milwaukee. The Panthers up by 17. Play Tucker doing a number on the Bulldogs. You're filling out a bracket on Selection Sunday. The choice is ESPN. The key to outdoor advertising? Location. So I put my 7-Up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors. At a ski resort. Ooh! Now that's a billboard with stopping power.
nothing performs like the BMW 3 Series. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. You gelling? No telling how much I'm gelling. You gelling? I'm gelling like a felon. Quit yelling, we're gelling. Right. Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles are so soft, they make any shoe feel outrageously comfortable. Are you gelling yet? Dr. Scholl's. Bulk t-shirt, $18. Spider-Man watch, $20. Men in black alien attack sunglasses, $16. Hearing your dad scream like your little sister, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. For special vacation offers, go to universalorlando.com. presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by the BMW 5 Series, BMW, the ultimate driving machine, and Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles. Are you gelling yet? Back in Milwaukee where the Panthers have stunned Butler out of the gate up 21-4. to four. Dave Rubson and Bob Valvano with you. And Bob, as we talked about this game with Bruce Pearl, he said tempo is going to be incredibly important. And right now his team is doing everything to control it. Well, we talked about how they have different styles to achieve the same results. Right now, uh, Bruce Pearl's team is getting all the results they want in the important areas. The tempo's their way, 21 points. They've got two three-pointers. They've given up none. They've created four turnovers. They've made none. So all the key areas, tempo, three-point shooting, turnovers, all going his way right now. And that would explain the 21-4 to score. Again, Butler, the team that got snubbed by the tournament committee last year, or certainly they feel they did, trying to take matters into their own hands this year, but off to a terrible start. We do have some subs in the game. Avery Sheets is in there for Butler. He wears number 21. He's being guarded by number 22, Jose Winston, for Wisconsin-Milwaukee. A good crossover there to draw the foul. If you are a good three-point shooting team, generally you're going to get them, again, a quick generalization, out of people doubling in the post or by good ball movement and making the defense chase you. And they've done neither of those things right now. They haven't made them make a decision in the post. That's nobody's chasing. That's a force right there. No matter how terrific they are as shooters, you got to get the defense to start moving around there. Yeah, it did not look like a... Kind of shot Archie wanted to take, but they do get it back and they'll reset it now. Lightfoot gets it to go and draws the foul. Well, that was a, another place you get it. It's very difficult to control is off of offensive rebounds. It's an erratic offensive rebound. A long rebound gets knocked out as the defense is trying to get themselves reset. Simple bounce pass along the baseline and the good finish by Lightfoot, who has four points now. And uh, they certainly are going to need somebody to kickstart them offensively. That foul was on Gillen Page. That's his second. It's something to keep an eye on for Milwaukee. He's a very important player for them. So Lettenberger in the game, wearing number 33 out top for Milwaukee, and Weiss wearing number 14. So a lot of substitutes early for Bruce Pearl. That's four ball reversals already for Milwaukee. Just a contrast to what's going on at the other end. They want to shoot a lot of threes as well. How much ball movement they made? That's five ball reversals. I guess six. There's been about 11 passes thrown here. Well, they haven't got much going right now, but if you move the ball, eventually good things happen for them. Well, That's a good thing. Clay Tucker's hands, and good things happen. 11 already for Clay Tucker. Now, that was pretty much an isolation after all those passes, but still, it's nice to see the ball moving. Everybody involved. You get the impression that they're making the defense react to them. Right now, you get the impression Butler's offense is reacting to Milwaukee's defense rather than the other way around. Archie, the off-balance three, and he hits this one. Oh, nice little dribble rub there. They got a couple of ball reversals right at the top. That's the best ball movement they've had, actually. Down low for Page. Cornette the rebound. Now let's see if that one shot gets some kickstarted. That's right in their wheelhouse. A wide-open three by Archie, the 40% three-point shooter. Maybe that'll get him going. Now Cornette. Oh, nice idea. Drive and kick. Again, that time, made the defense react to him. Good move by the big fella. So Wisconsin-Milwaukee still up by two touchdowns. We're coming back.
Doctors recommend elevating your heart rate at least 30 minutes a day. Here's to your health. The BMW 3 Series. The ultimate driving machine. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. Hello, Moto. You want to take it one step? yourself as a moderately risky investor. In that case, how comfortable would you be if in the short term your portfolio value declined by, say, 30 percent? How short is short term? You have to ride these things out. Not acceptable. I'm looking farther down the road than that. I'm going to suggest we modify your risk tolerance to fairly conservative. Yeah. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. UBS Payne Weber. This is Labatt Blue, the clean, crisp lager imported daily from Canada. Its refreshing, honest taste comes from a... Sorry! Oh, my bad, my bad. I got carried away a little. Uh, we're gonna need another blue over here. This one's spilled. Can we get another blue, please? Cold, like this one. We gonna crown the champion right here on ESPN. Back in Milwaukee, the Panthers up by 14, thanks in large part to Clay Tucker. Well, he takes advantage of some uncharacteristic sloppy ball handling by Butler. They are so good at taking care of the basketball. You see a straight pass, and Tucker not only saves it, but then turns it into a layup at the other end. But of course, he's done a lot of his damage in transition. The good step back jumper there. That's a senior heady play there. And then this one is just, I can reach from here, might as well shoot it. <laughs> And nothing but the bottom. He is on fire early. Pretty there you see the numbers. numbers. Yeah, absolutely. Five of seven from the field, and he's already hit more field goals than the Butler Bulldogs have combined as a team. As Sheets going to chase that one down. Well, now they're, they're going to have a short shot clock. They're already down to 17. That was a disaster right from the start. You don't mind throwing the ball into the backcourt. In fact, that's a wise play, but God, that ball was so far over his head and almost bounced into the goal in the backcourt. I mean, he had to really run that down. By the time he caught up with it, he had about 90 feet to go against pressure, and now they're down to 17 on the shot clock. Well, you wouldn't know it from watching this game, but generally, these guys play very close games, Bob. Oh, these games have been legendary in this league. You look at, you know, close games make heroes. How about that hero? He's been a hero so far tonight. Clay Tucker, last year, on the road, hits the three to give his team the one-point victory. And then this was a guy who clearly was not the first option on the play. He's only a freshman, Avery Sheets. That's just 10 days ago. He told me in the pregame they were looking for Cornette as a set play. Couldn't get it to him. And he said, I just went up with it, started dribbling, and said, I'm going to get the best shot I can. And I'd say he got a pretty good one. Last five games between these two schools decided by a total of 13 points. It's a 14-point lead right now for Milwaukee. Sheets trying to cut into that, missing, and Tucker rebounded. That's all right. That's more of a Butler kind of shot. That had the defense moving a little bit. That is Bruce Pearl really trying to force the tempo. It is surprising that Butler, who plays such a kind of controlled tempo game, is not great in defensive transition. Just going to look at the series history here. Butler, not surprisingly, with a significant edge. They have a significant edge on most people. They have been a dominant program. What a run they've had. The numbers are astounding. Seven straight 20 win seasons for the Butler Bulldogs. Before that, they had won 20 just three times in school history. Really is remarkable what they've put together. The last four, 98 and 26. That's a 790 winning percentage. That's, uh, that's not too shabby. Well, that's caught in there. Joel Cornett check it back in for Butler. Lettenberger at the line. He is a walk-on. Has never had a scholarship. He misses them both. 
guy who started 12 games last year as a walkout. Bruce Pearl offered him the opportunity to sit out this year and get a scholarship next year, but he said he wanted to play. That's terrific, you get walk-ons like that. Cornette, nice feed for Lightfoot. Uh, he is a terrific passer, and uh, you've seen it a couple times now. Once on the drive, and attempted dish to the corner, and that time, going back inside for the lay-in. Lightfoot's been about the only offense for Butler. He's got six. Milky missing the turnaround, and Lightfoot getting the rebound. Butler doing, doing what they do. Going to dance with the girl that brung you. They are going to play their game and try and claw their way back into this thing. And you get a feeling they're getting a little bit more relaxed offensively right now. Leave out front. The next down in the lane. Wait to see if somebody doubles. They don't, so he takes the shot. He misses that one. It goes out of bounds. It's going to go to the Bulldogs. Don't forget tonight's championship week continues with two conference finals on ESPN and ESPN2. Following our game on ESPN, Middle Tennessee State and Western Kentucky for the Sun Belt Conference title on ESPN2. Also 9 Eastern, it's the Mid-Continent Conference. Number one versus number two, Valpo and IUPUI. Championship week presented by 7UP on ESPN and ESPN2. Here it's a 13-point Wisconsin-Milwaukee lead. They led it 14 to nothing and have not looked back. Parts and spots a foul away from the ball, I believe, in their legal screen. Yes, it is. Milwaukee It's going to be on Milky. It's going to be on Milky. His first. Guy who's very foul prone, averages about one foul every five minutes on the floor. So in fact, he's made it this long and only has one foul. It's really good news for Bruce Pearl. Interesting to see Bruce Pearl get, by his standards, very conservative because he knows if you press, you're susceptible to threes. So he just showed the press as it came in, they didn't bother traffic. They're just going to get back and play the good half court defense. They force another turnover. Well, Miller felt like he got fouled, but instead they call the travel and it's going to go back over to the Panthers. That time you got to give Bruce Pearl's club some credit. That was terrific half court defense against the little weave out front. They have such great range. They run those little dribble rubs 28 feet away from the basket. You, you got to try and get over the top because if you slide behind, they're going to shoot it. He's done a great job though in the half court defense. Todd, Todd Licklider said yesterday. The Wisconsin Milwaukee gives them more trouble than any other team with their perimeter defense because they recover so well. They only get those gaps to shoot the threes. And they do a good job here. This is another going back to the days of Tom Davis. He calls for eight or ten cutters and they just run the flex and throw it side to side. Got an air ball to show for it, but they are very patient when they do that. Another near turnover. Instead, they get it to Cornette. He misses the layup and Milky the rebound. Well, both teams dodged the bullet there because it should have been a turnover to begin with. And Milwaukee should have given up a layup when they actually didn't come up with the ball, and neither happened. Got a foul on the Bulldogs. Right it's going to go on Darnell Archie. Darnell Archie, this first. The first on Archie. There's still a 13 point lead for Wisconsin Milwaukee, 24 11. It's time to dance. Well, the time has finally come for us to see who's number one. Get out on the floor. It's all right to dance. We gon' crown the champion right here on ESPN. performs like the BMW 3 Series. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. On Selection Sunday, the choice is ESPN. At 5, we're first and exclusive with the NCAA Women's Bracket, plus live interviews with teams around the country. At 6, Sports Center brings you the Men's Bracket with expert analysis plus all the sports news of the day. Then at 7, Hoops as a second language. Gypsy Doo Dunkaroo, and you gotta have the stars, the PTPers, baby. As professors Chris Digger and Dickie V teach Bracketology 101, presented by Staples. If you're filling out a bracket on some... 
Action Sunday start here. I know some interns who went the extra mile tonight. I'm one of them. Whoa, very funny. Hey, hey, hey oh, turn the lights out. Oh, boy. Is somebody there? Just the tech support night shift. Yeah, everybody thinks just because Dell makes such reliable PCs, we just punch out at five. But when someone does have a question, we are here 24-7, 365. Yeah, that's what award-winning service and support is all about. That's right. Someone's always around to help yeah. out. And let me tell you, we're certainly not afraid of the dark. Uh-huh. I'm a little afraid of the dark. Pull it together, Schneider. <laughs> Get a Dimension desktop with a 17-inch monitor for just $5.99 after a $100 mail-in rebate. Featuring an Intel Pentium 4 processor for awesome performance for today's digital entertainment. Recording music, sharing photos, gaming, and beyond. And right now, you'll get free shipping. Get great deals on notebooks, too. Sorry about that. Uh, there must be something wrong with the fuse or something. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. Dell PCs use Intel Pentium 4 processors. Back in Milwaukee, we were talking about the great perimeter defense from the Panthers. You see it here. Watch them switch. You see the good switch there by Jones. Now he stays with his man there because he hasn't dribbled, he hasn't delivered the ball yet to Cornett. Now watch they'll switch again here. You see Sanders makes the good switch out. They are such good perimeter shooters. Bruce Pearl's trying to eliminate any kind of decision making there. As soon as that guy goes behind on the weave for the rub, you step out and switch it this way. If that guy's going to try and tee it up from there, he's going to have a hand in his face. So far, it's worked well for him. They are winning the battle from the perimeter. Two of six, holding Butler to just one of six. And that, of course, is such a big part of Butler's offense. Just 16% again from behind the arc for Butler. And this is a team that shot below 33% from three-point range only five times all year. Now down low. The Panthers nearly turn it over, but it will stay with Wisconsin-Milwaukee as Miller fell out of bounds with the ball. Terrific help by Miller. The ball got inside. Miller came just what you want your weak side guard to do. Dive back to the block defensively, protect the goal. He got in there and broke it up. Rod Sanders seeing a lot of playing time early on, and he gets his first two exceeding his season average. And they steal the inbounds, or almost do. And there's a foul, a hard collision, too. Cornette really got clocked. Well, I have nightmares about that out-of-bounds play. I saw Bruce Pearl run that out-of-bounds play against our team for years. It seems so simple. Four guys along the baseline. They do a, they do two or three different things out of that same set. That one worked beautifully. Again, it's championship week presented by 7-Up. The Horizon League title on the line. He's Bob Valvano. I'm Dave Remsen. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Butler. The Panthers in the gold the uniforms. The Butler Bulldogs in the white, trimmed in blue. There is Joel Cornetto. We talked about off the top. He has yet to score for Butler, Bob. Well, he has had opportunities. He's missed a couple of bunnies inside, but largely it's because I think it's just what we talked about earlier. They haven't been able to make Milwaukee chase him enough to where they can get the isolation in the post. And so it's, uh, it's been more. Milwaukee has, I think, Butler back on the heels a little bit. Cornetto evidently is bleeding. Going to have to go to the bench. Which. Unfortunately, is, is a bad sign for him leaving the game, but he has the collision again. Sanders, boop, elbow right in the face. If you want to be cynical about it, yes, it helps him in the short be. term because <laughs> Fournette is only about to be very cynical. a 49% free throw shooter. Almost anybody in the arena is going to do better than that, especially the guy in the line right now, Avery Sheets. He, Avery Sheets is a 77% shooter, but in the long term, they want that guy back sooner rather than later. So Sheets does go to the stripe as they are in the bonus, and Rolls the first one home. And he's going to come back. Cornette's going to come right back in as soon as they can get him to the table. He can't come back in until the clock starts again. She hits one of two. 26 to 12. We have played nearly 13 minutes. The Butler Bulldogs have scored 12 points. Tucker throwing the alley-oop. Yeah, set play. Maybe, maybe wasn't quite there, and they get lucky, and they get it back. You gotta give Bruce Pearl's team credit that very often you'll get that big lead on the emotional high home court chance to go to the tournament. Contrast the numbers on the Cornette there you see on the screen. But then when the emotion wears off, all of a sudden that lead dwindles quickly. They've been able to spar and keep them at bay because of their defense. You saw them switching on the perimeter. Again, that 1 4 on the baseline out of bounds. Good strip down low that time by Monterey. Light foot. Nearly loses it, throws it up. No, Cornette tipping it home. 
Well, maybe that'll get him going. A great hustle play by the big fella. Good left-handed tip. That was just an effort bucket there. On their way back. And it's a 12. Get it to single digits would be a big psychological lift for them. That foul is going to go, it looks like, against Dylan Page. Foul, number one, Dwayne Lightfoot. They're going to give it to Lightfoot. It is on Lightfoot. Now watch the everything they do is out of the one four set. They've done three different things already. They step the guy back and then they duck in the guy opposite. They cross screen. That time they back screen. And we've seen that already. <laughs> 14 points for Clay Tucker. And the lead back up to 15. We talked about it being 14-0 out of the gate. Set him. Wisconsin Milwaukee keeping that lead right up in those numbers and that's exactly what they've done Butler has not been able to get it back under 10. Yeah, that's huge to spar That's absolutely tremendous uh, that they've been able for Bruce Pearl's team to, to just trade punches Keep this thing in double digits and now they got a chance at another steal Good hustle by Lettenberger, but he stepped out of bounds there So it's gonna go back to the Bulldogs, but they have not been able to make any progress down 15 right here don't forget, tomorrow, Championship Week continues. The Magra Foods Big East Championship kicks off. First round action at noon. St. John's taking on Notre Dame. Then at 2 Eastern, West Virginia meeting Providence. Championship Week presented by 7UP on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Again, a little dribble rub on the perimeter. Let's see how they play it. They switch. That time he slid through it. Good defense that time by Frederick. Archie missing the layup, went to his left, which is what Bruce Pearl said yesterday they want to make him do. Nearly converted. Nice. Milky. That's a great job of just muscling it in the lane and then finding the big man for the lane. And now the press gets very aggressive. And they're going to get a turnover out of it. Sheets out of control there. He does turn it over the freshman making an uncharacteristic error. Well, that's deep. Well, they're getting all the hustle plays. Now, they have absolutely all the momentum in the world right now. And Bruce Pearl senses it, says, you know what? Let's give ourselves a nice big cushion by the intermission. Watch the good drive. Strong move against two defenders, and then Milky finishes it. But the heavy lifting was done on the drive and the nice delivery on the pass by Jones. Foul there was on Dwayne Lightfoot. That's number two on him, sixth on Butler. So Milwaukee will shoot with the next one. And they're right into the flex motion. Here comes Frederick. He faked it that time, stays on this side. But Frederick showed you before he's not afraid to pull the trigger. Says he models his game after Chris Kingsbury. There's another Good guy Lord. shooting a long three. Tucker, these guys. He's going to get a hernia shot shoot out there. That is, that's. That's one of those right at the end of practice. Just have a good time. Let's say, fellas, let's make a bet. I'll make this one. <laughs> you buy me pizza. That's nice great. cut. Oh, that's good Put ball movement. Leaves it for Lightfoot, who gets fouled. That's terrific ball movement. That's the first time we've seen the kind of passing that Butler is known for. Two terrific passes here. Here's the start of it. Off the screen, right there. It was the screener ultimately. Cornett going to the basket, and then he finds Lightfoot. Three good passes. It all started with the ball screen set by Cornett, and then he rolled to the goal. That got the defense chasing, but boy, they can't take advantage of their opportunities. It's a pretty good free throw shooter, Lightfoot, 72%. That foul was on Milky, and he's going to sit down to take a look at Todd Licklider. Probably won't see Milky again. I'd have to think that was his second foul. So he'll probably sit out until after the end of the half. If Bruce has his druthers, he certainly will sit him out. Lightfoot hits one of two. Seven points now for him to lead the Bulldogs. Well, they need to get a couple of possessions on the defensive end. And there's one right there. That's where you need players to make plays. At the defensive end when you're behind. Let the offense come from what you do on the defensive end. Brandon Miller, one of their senior leaders, coming up with that steal. See if they can convert it on the other end now. Montserrat. He didn't see Jones coming from the back. Jones almost got a steal, and he does get the turnover. You just can't give it back off of the turnovers. That is what's killing Butler right now. 
They are not known to turn the ball over, and they are making a bushel full here in the first half, by their standards anyway. Great interior passing. Lettenberger, though, unable to finish. And Monterey comes out of there with the rebound. Right, Butler can't afford empty possessions now. They have got to take advantage. That's not a turnover, but it's an empty possession for Milwaukee. They've got to make something good happen here. They are not getting any flow. They're having a heck of a time getting into anything. Now Tucker, one-on-one -on -one with Miller, lays it in, and he's fouled. And when it's going your way, not only is it almost an unforced turnover, not completely, but Montserrat really shouldn't turn the ball over there. But then Tucker, just going to stop his dribble the ball. He fumbles it, falls down. Tucker on the drive. That's a charge block situation. Can go either way. Miller tries to get there, but when it's rolling, it's rolling your way. And they say Miller's not there. It's very close. He was very close to being there as we got a chance to look at it again. Derek Huff coming into the game, wearing number one for Milwaukee as Tucker looks for his 17th point. And he misses that one. Well, the problem for Butler is they don't want to press. They don't like to press. They're not going to get back in the game by going full court and doing that. So they've got to get some solutions in the half court offense. And they just are having a terrible time getting by this perimeter pressure. They need somebody who can just go by on the dribble. Lightfoot's been their best offense so far. He gets fouled there. It'll go back to the strike. Uh, it's very, I mean, as I've said, I've been preaching ball movement, make the defense chase, and especially that's the way Butler plays. They give you all these sets. They give you all these looks. They've got to move the basketball. But at some point, if they're going to extend that far, they need somebody who can just go off the dribble and go by his man and make them pay for that kind of perimeter pressure. And they haven't had anybody who's been able to do it. Put missing the free throw. And then this pretty good free throw shooting team is just laboring from the strike. Lightfoot really has stepped it up this season, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, I guess. My goodness. <laughs> Zero field goals all of last season. Let me see. 136. I think that's an improvement of 136. Oh, you I think, are a uh, mathematical genius. Yes, I did that. I had my abacus right here. Gets the free throw there, but it's still a 17 point deficit for the Butler Bulldogs as Clay Tucker is having his way for the Panthers. Looking to start up the excitement in your life? Then get to your local Ford store and check out the 2003 Ford Focus, one of car and driver's 10 best four years in a row. Right now, you can lease a new Focus for only $199 a month with only $15.98 due at signing. Drive off in a Ford Focus for only $1.99 a month, only at your local Ford store. The key to outdoor advertising? Location. So I put my 7-Up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors. At a ski resort. Ooh! Now that's a billboard with stopping power. Yeah. Why do I rent from Enterprise? For more cargo room. More people room. Or more headroom. Enterprise. So easy, it's like having a second car. Or third. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. The male can often find himself in precarious situations. It is funny. So how many girls have you, you know? Seriously? Me too. Okay. <laughs> Great. Rolling rock beer. Grab a rock. Hi, Chris, Digger, and Jay on the 7 Up Half the Report. A question Butler fans might be wondering. Have three, quote, mid-major conferences 
ever had at large bids in the same NCAA tournament there. And I'm telling you what, Chris, all the big boys who start playing tomorrow, those major conferences, they're starting to sweat because guess what? Some at larges are starting to drift away, maybe. <laughs> Boy, Butler's starting to sweat too. Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee probably wouldn't get in without this game. Butler, maybe. <laughs> Dave, Bob, we'll see you at halftime. All right, gentlemen, thanks a lot. You're right, the Butler Bulldogs certainly sweating right now, Bob Valvano. Down by 17 points. And what's going on here? Well, it's a pretty simple. If you look at the numbers, Butler averages over 23 point attempts a game, and they make over eight a game. They've only tried six, and we've only got a little more than three minutes to go in the half. Jones for three. He hits it. That's a great job by Bruce Pearl. He anticipated the trap. They tried to, Todd Licklight, they got to try and kickstart his team. Tries to get a little double team out of that timeout. Great spacing and a wide open look. It's all going the way of the gold team right now. Biggest lead of the game at 20 points now for the Panthers. Again, on the perimeter, trying to get the lead, but really not getting them to chase. Nothing happening inside to make them double team. It's a lot of east-west basketball right now. Butler. Now they get some penetration. This is Cornette. Grabbed off the rim by Tucker, and they come the other way. It's a Butler team that gets 37% of its scoring. That's a good call. That's a call that won't be popular, but my goodness, that has just gotten out of hand. The guys taking the basketball and getting rather liberal with carrying the ball. So I was saying the Bulldogs, 37% of their scoring from the three on the year, and they have three. They've got three points from it tonight. That's exactly right. And frighteningly for them, that's about 20% of their scoring, which tells you about the rest of their offense. Yeah, that's, and that's part of the problem. They need to get Cornette inside, get some post baskets, or get somebody who can beat them on a dribble drop. The weave stuff is great, but somebody like a running back's got to turn the corner and go to the goal. They're playing all east-west. Here's a different set. See if they get something out of this. There's Curry back in the ball game. Look how much they are playing east-west, though. See if Miller can create something. Not really. Seven on the just shot clock. Stifling. Nice. Haran has it partially blocked He's by Tucker. Run he is wide open. Tucker lays it in. They can get no looks. They have run the weave. They've run their sets. Now it's dangerous because the mindset is to forget about your inside game. They need to get Cornette involved here somehow, some way. Get him back down occasionally on the block. He's going to try and set a screen here for Miller. Maybe they can get a little two-man game going. Foul out top going to be against Jose Winston. Forget coming up, it's our 7-Up Halftime Report. With Chris Digger and Jay in the studio are the Zags dancing. Let you know after that loss last night. More streaking and we'll talk about teams on the bubble and the Butler Bulldogs may very well be one of those teams on the bubble. Talked to Joe Lenardi earlier today. He said, hey, no matter what happens, Butler is in. But I don't think anybody envisioned this, Bob. Take a look at the defense. That was the tail end of the shot clock. They had just defended him. In fact, you'll hear the buzzer go off or see the buzzer go off in the background because the shot clock violation, they would have gotten it had they not come up with the basketball. They ran the shot clock all the way down and then got a block shot and a run out out of it. That's like the uh, trifecta of great defense right there. Those are the first two points for Brandon Miller. He is Butler's leading scorer coming in. Look at how much Milwaukee's playing facing the goal, though. Butler never gets them to turn their back. Watch when Butler has it at the other end, how frequently they're playing sideways and with their backs to the goal, reacting to the defensive pressure. Jones that time missing the open three. Miller comes out of there with the rebound. So Bruce Pearl's got to be delighted with what his defense has done. Oh, that's a mistake. Miller cannot leave him on the perimeter. That time they get away with it, though. That's when things are going your way. That was just a missed assignment, and they got away with it. Jones missing, Cornette the rebound. Got a four second differential, but obviously Butler would be more than happy to get a shot up quickly here. Again, not much going there. Good help off the screen. Makes him back out. That was a nice play by Archie, though. Lure the defense away, get him chasing. The then... three was partially deflected, but they're gonna call the foul on Tucker. Well, they got him chasing a little bit, just enough, so Tucker hammered him and get three. 
Tonight, Championship Week continuing with two conference finals on ESPN and ESPN2. After our game on ESPN, Middle Tennessee State at Western Kentucky for the Sun Belt Conference crowd. And on ESPN2, also 9 Eastern, the Mid-Continent Conference Championship. Number one versus number two, Valpo against IUPUI. Championship Week presented by 7UP on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. So Archie goes to the free throw line, and you might as well just mark three on the score sheet here because this guy, he is basically automatic. Yeah, if he'd have missed one of those, then you'd have had to really say, boy, they just, <laughs> the wheels are completely come off for Butler. How about 96%? He Astounding. is 148 for 156 <laughs> try in his do, NCAA career. Try do that in practice one day. An unbelievable shooter. It was only a two-shot oh, foul. Oh, they only gave him two. It was not a shooting foul. So he gets two out of it. And the lead is 18. Either that or it was a shooting foul inside the arc, which is probably more likely, I would guess, because he's definitely shooting it. Frederick for three. Not there, the rebound comes out, and that nearly will be the end of the half, and it can't come soon enough for the Butler Bulldogs. Well, they might as well take a heave-ho here. They need, they are gonna need a, a not, not quite a miraculous comeback, but a dramatic comeback, so that'd be pretty dramatic if they could throw in about a 50-footer here. Again, keep in mind, last five meetings against these two decided by a total of 13 points. Butler had a huge lead in the game in Indianapolis earlier this year, and Wisconsin-Milwaukee came back and made a great game of it, actually took the lead before Butler won it on a buzzer beater. So this one is far from over. Oh, now they're going to get a shot. That's how bad things are going for Butler. That's the ball. only thing you can't do is throw it straight out of bounds because now... Milwaukee gets it at the point it was thrown, not where it went out of bounds. It has to be touched for it to go where the ball went out of bounds. So now it goes all the way on the baseline. I already talked about these wonderful baseline out of bounds plays that Bruce Pearl has. I guarantee you he's got one of the books where they'll get a shot in a second. Well, Todd Licklider just has to be absolutely flabbergasted. That the tenth turnover for the Bulldogs. We told you off the top they average just 10.3 per game, fewest in the NCAA. So essentially, they are already at their season average, and we play just one half. Unless they can make a point, a third of a turnover <laughs> in the second half, they're going to, or have a perfect second half, they're going to exceed that. Yeah, and that's what Bruce Pearl's got to be most delighted with. You see the graphic. Let's see what he runs here. He has. Let's see if I can remember all of these. <laughs> I saw them enough. I coached for those of you who may not and probably wouldn't know, but I had a chance to coach against Bruce Pro probably a dozen times, and there's a bunch of uh, sets here once? with lobs. You know, he's only, hey, the guy's only lost 66 times. I'm proud to say one of those is mine. There you go. Fortunately, he's got 270 wins. I'm a bunch of those, so, but he's he's got some lobs here. I would look right in front of the goal, see if he can set a lob up for somebody. Well, there's a shot for Jones. Gets it off, doesn't go. I knew they'd get one away, though. What a half for Clay Tucker in Wisconsin, Milwaukee. He has 18. They are up 18. Wisconsin, Milwaukee smelling its first ever trip to the Nats 20 minutes away as we send it to Chris J. Digger. Dave and Bob, thanks. Welcome to the 7 Up Halftime Report. Yeah, the two games this season. Decided by a combined six points. Good news for the Bulldogs. They played them even the last 16 minutes. The bad news, they were they were down 14 nothing. He may have to try to sneak a <laughs> sixth guy on the floor to come up with a 3-2-1 zone press to try to get this game back because Butler's got serious problems. They there. do have problems turning the ball over. And you know who did a terrific job was Ronnie Jones. He would not let Brandon Miller breathe. And Butler could not get off a three-point shot. They shoot a lot of threes, but they couldn't get a good look at the basket. So Butler, if things keep going this way, may have to sweat out selection Sunday. What about Gonzaga? What about Southern Illinois? We'll talk about the mid-majors when we come back on the 7-Up Half Number 4 right after this. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week, presented by 7-Up, is brought to you by Wrigley's Eclipse Flash. Finally, a breath strip that tastes good. And Ford. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. What if you could plan the perfect escape? You'd have to be able to go anywhere at a moment's notice. You'd have to have more than enough room to operate in. And of course, you'd need to make a smooth getaway. Nothing can be equipped with more ways to escape than Ford Escape. 
If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Disciplined investing. It's not about following the crowd. At T. Rowe Price, our independent research means we're not deceived by every market ripple, and we don't chase every fad. Over 70% of our mutual funds beat their three, five, and 10-year Lipper averages. We have the experience to know what works and the insight to find real opportunity. T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. V-Rod. Claim yours before they're gone. Hey, I know you're frustrated with slow dial-up internet. And if you think you can't get high-speed internet, think again. Now there's a new high-speed internet solution by satellite. And you can get it right now. DirectWay is the high-speed internet that works anywhere in the continental U.S., just as long as you have a clear view of the southern sky. Interested? Thought so. Now grab your remote, flip to channel 227, and find out about the new high-speed internet option available right now. Channel 227. I'll meet you there. Tablespoons of underway now for 19. What is that? Next time, try locks and limits. Control what your kids watch with a touch of a button. Direct TV. Happy watching. Welcome to the 7 Up Halftime Report. Well, Stunners so far in Milwaukee Panthers on their home court. 18 point lead, 20 minutes away from their first ever NCAA bid in the Horizon League, of course. Welcome back to the 7 Up Halftime Report. Chris Fowler, Digger Phelps, and Jay Billis. Last year, it was Butler getting snubbed on Selection Sunday. It caused an outrage. They feel pretty good about their resume this year, but the question is, can you have three conferences with the label dated test of mid-major having at large bids? It would be a rarity. Take you back to last night in the West Coast Conference. Similar circumstances. Gonzaga, regular season champ, but playing on the road at San Diego. Richard Fox misses. Tony Skinner for the Zags misses. And then Mike McGrain drives with the Toreros, lobs it up to Jason Keefe at 18 points. San Diego grabs the two-point lead midway second half. Roy Morris, this was a huge triple. Stretched a one-point lead to four. He finished with 15, and San Diego knocks off Gonzaga on their home court to get the automatic bid out of the West Coast. Here are the teams that have clinched bids. UNC Wilmington, the team that shocked USC and gave Indiana a run last year. They go back with Brad Brownell, a first-year head coach. Manhattan can do some damage. Creighton, of course, out of the Missouri Valley. There's San Diego. Troy State, for the first time ever, goes in. Asheville will play almost certainly in that play-in game at 14 and 16. And Pennsylvania playing Princeton tonight, but they've already lapped, wrapped up the Ivy League bid. So, guys, back to Gonzaga. The very tough schedule, pretty good RPI, but no automatic bid. Do they have to sweat? I think they should sweat a little bit, but I think Gonzaga ultimately is going to get in. Remember, when they lost to Stanford and St. Joseph's, and St. Joe's was in overtime, Roni Turioff was injured, and Corey Violet was injured as well when they played against San Diego. And they played at San Diego, don't forget that. So without being full strength, I think Gonzaga has certainly done enough to get in. They beat Utah earlier in the season. They played a really tough schedule. In Maui, they played both Indiana and Kentucky and played both of them tough. One thing about Gonzaga, they have not gotten blown out all year. And a lot of big-time schools, that are on the bubble, so to speak, have been blitzed, and Gonzaga has not. And the other thing about the Zags, when you look at them, I just feel that when you look at everybody they've played this year non-conference, they really stepped up their schedule, and that was very important to do that. Indiana, Kentucky, uh, Georgia, Stanford, all right, they were losses, but they're all good losses when you want to look at their strength of schedule. And the thing is, yeah, they beat Washington, Washington State, they stepped out and played the Pac-10, but their wins over Utah and NC State really helped. But I feel this way. You get a kid hurt, and now you got to go play somebody three times, and, tr and you've beaten them twice, and you got to go back after you beat them three points March 1st. That really hurt. And, and 
They had to know last night that San Diego was going to play this tough, so I don't think they should be penalized with this loss. Well, yeah, some might call it excuses, but you said the injury and the fact that they had to play on the road. The committee has to look into that. Kind that of has thing. to be factored in. Bottom line, they get in before Southern Illinois and Butler, in my opinion. Well, let's talk about the Missouri Valley and Southern Illinois, which had a terrific regular season. Many believe they had a very solid resume. But they came out against Creighton, fell behind 20 to 4, and just put together one of the most miserable performances all season long. Can one game knock them down that much in the well, minds of the committee? Well, a lot of people thought that before this game started last night that that it was just going to be both these teams are going winner goes losers go but the fact is this when you lose and get blown out now you open up some eyes and believe me this is what's going on with Butler in the first half the same thing happened last night to Southern Illinois and when you've got to fight all these teams now especially when you're going against the Big East the Big Ten the Big 12 the Pac-10 the SEC this may go against you it may and for Southern Illinois they're two and five against the top 100 and that's really the key the the one win they've got to hang their hat on is they beat Creighton they also beat Wisconsin Milwaukee but you know I think the key for Southern Illinois is the best evidence of how a team is going to play in a national tournament on a neutral court is how you play in a tournament on a neutral court and that's what they had in the Missouri Valley tournament and they did not play well in the final. That's true. That's an understatement, but the Missouri Valley are respected enough league. You'd have to believe two bids. It's almost become the norm. It's going to be league. close, though. The competition for these kind of bids, let's look at some teams in, in major conferences that may be sitting on the fence. And your thoughts on this group? Well, I really think Oregon still, I mean, you look at the record 20 and 9, the Pac 10 is a strong conference. And, and to me, I just still think that five teams with Arizona State will make it with Cal, Stanford, and Arizona. I think those five teams have a lock, and the conference tournament will just get them seated for the NCAA tournament. I'll be shocked if Oregon's not in. And Seton Hall in the best position there, not only with the RPI, but it's hard for me to believe that some of those teams, their RPI is as high as, especially Auburn's, because I don't think they've played that good of a schedule. The RPI has never been so mysterious as far as <laughs> numbers assigned to certain teams this season. Villanova in women's basketball trying to pull off a humongous upset. Highlights from their game against UConn coming up next. This halftime report is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. The key to outdoor advertising? Location. So I put my 7-Up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors. At a ski resort. Ooh! Now that's a billboard with stopping power. Now there's a better way to soothe your skin after shaving. Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm has advanced moisturizers and vitamins to soothe and improve your skin. Nivea for Men. More evolved skin care. For over 60 years, Owens Corning has been advancing the science of insulation, roofing, siding, sound control, and more. And everything we've learned, we've put into one very special place, your home. Owens Corning, innovations for living. And now the end is near, and so I face the final bidding. From A to Z, from there to here, I shop the world. All while I'm sitting, brand new and collectibles, thank you, on the information superhighway. You'll save more and find things like this when you do it eBay. Okay, guys, get this bird put away and we're done for the day. With a new available Power Stroke Diesel, five-speed automatic torque shift transmission, and the most torque and horsepower of any diesel pickup, F-Series Super Duty goes way beyond just getting the job done. F-Series. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Morning, William. CJ. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows. Your name. Looks like somebody got a haircut. Too short? Hey, um, no, you can't drive. Sure. See you tomorrow, Bobby. Can you come in and play? Who can you count on? You know them by name. We gon' crown 
the champion right here on ESPN. The Connecticut women, nine-time defending champs in the Big East, playing Bill Nova in the championship game over on ESPN2. And that's Nova's Trish Juline with the early three-pointer. Nova would take the lead here. Diana Taurasi, basket and a foul, but a tough first half for her, only five points. Huskies shooting 22%. Bill Nova with Jana Rediger getting the shot in the lane, snaps a streak of 86 games in a row, which Connecticut led at half them. They were down three early second half. Jessica Moore, the hoop and the foul, missed the free throw. That tied the game. That's where we stand on ESPN2, 22 apiece. At 9 o'clock, two more automatic bids are at stake. You got the Sunbelt Conference Championship game right here. Middle Tennessee State on the floor of top seed Western Kentucky. And Balfo against IUPUI, top two seeds mid-continent on ESPN2. That is Indiana University, Purdue University of Indianapolis. And we'll try to explain you that one at halftime. It's a quick halftime bigger. That's why we have to use the abbreviation. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and Bob are back for the second half from Milwaukee. Butler in a deep hole. Can they come back? We'll find out when you come back. This halftime report is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Now you can arm your system with just the turn of a key. And with no codes to enter, SafeWatch EZ virtually eliminates accidentally setting off your alarm. Even if you misplace your key, you're still protected. It couldn't be easier or more affordable because now you can get SafeWatch EZ for as little as $99, plus up to 20% off your homeowner's insurance. Like every ADT system, SafeWatch EZ connects you to our monitoring center where trained professionals watch out for you around the clock, helping protect you from burglary fire and carbon monoxide no wonder more americans choose adt than any other security company call 1-800-ADT-ASAP adt always there espn's presentation of championship week presented by seven up is brought to you by hershey's milk and milkshakes intensely chocolate intensely hershey's and Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at nbusa.com. One hundred and seven years of basketball, Wisconsin, Milwaukee. They've never been to the NCAA Division I tournament. They're 20 minutes away, up 18 on Butler. 
to start the second half. Dave Revson and Bob Valvano back with you. And Bob, really two stories here in the first half, Clay Tucker and defense. Yeah, and they've gone hand in hand. The way they've come out so offensively aggressive and confident, and I think Clay Tucker typified that. Watch how deep this shot is in transition. That's a team that's got a lot of confidence. 31 on the shot clock. He takes about a 28-footer here off the one dribble, going to his left, pulls up and knocks it down. That wouldn't mean much if it weren't for the great perimeter defense. They've held them to just seven three-point attempts and only one make, and in this case, the great perimeter defense leads to the run out and the layup. Some games, the stats don't tell the story. In this game, boy, do they ever. Look at those three-point shooting numbers. Wisconsin-Milwaukee, four for 13, and holding Butler to just seven tries and only one goal. Turnovers, 10 to five. Butler only averages a little over 10 per game. Remarkable job at both ends of the floor for Bruce Pearl's team, led by that guy. Clay Tucker really set the tone early. He came out very confident offensively at the start of the game, and his teammates followed his lead. Tucker, 18 points in the first half. Butler, 20 points in the first half. Yeah, he's, a, he's down two, I guess, but more <laughs> importantly, his team is up 18. And again, the good movement early. Flex, three ball reversals already. Pressure, almost a layup inside. Now they get to run their baseline out of bounds play, which so far has been pretty good to them. They tried, tried to, to scout Tucker. it. Yeah, Montserrat knew it. That, what they look for is Tucker steps back there, and if he catches it, he looks to the opposite block for the duck in. Montserrat saw it come and tried to beat him to the spot. Instead, just picked up a foul, trying to break it up. Second on Montserrat, who was held scoreless in the first half. A guy who averages about 10 points per game, and a really important part of the Butler offense. He's shut down by Tucker. Good ball movement reflected in Bruce Pearl's balanced offense. They have three 1,000-point scorers in their program. That is so unbelievably rare in, T in Tucker, Frederick, and Jones. And they also uh, have had a whole bunch of different guys who have gone for double figures this year. Short shot clock, no panic, although it's going to be a turnover. It is. Archie comes up with it. So the Bulldogs needing to cut into this 18-point deficit. Well, the first five minutes will be huge. See if you can get a feel for any adjustments they made at halftime. One of which is to run Archie around like a wind-up doll of an at the start. <laughs> but they turn it over again. They have now exceeded their season average. Jones the other way. Milwaukee wants to run it. Into the lane and lays it in. I think that's a significant exchange. Gives Bruce Pearl's team the confidence. You can't have any tricks we're not ready for, even though it's only a couple of exchanges up and down the floor. First basket is theirs, and it's a layup. And again. Not much going on. They are trying to get Archie involved. Here he comes off the screen. And the ring just settles down. Cornette's going to try and play one-on-one. -on -one. If somebody comes to help, he's going to look to pass. Which is exactly what he does. He finds Montserrat underneath, and he's going to the line. Well, that was a good, simple approach and a good one, actually. You got to take a look. Archie did a good job creating motion. Then they were obviously going to try and go to Cornette as they did on this last possession. This was the possession before that. You see, they forced it a bit there. Leads to the turnover. And then they uh, put salt in their own wound by doing nothing to stop the basketball. And Jones gets an easy one. That is the third foul on Nate Milky as Monterey misses the free throw. Let's we'll see if they keep Milky out there. You see the points off turnovers in the favor of Wisconsin-Milwaukee is basically every stat in the game is. Yeah. Montserrat, a guy who averages almost 10 points a game, looking for his first point. Still scoreless. Talked about the great job Jones did on Miller in the first half. Miller, of course, averages almost 13 points a game. He's got two. This has been a old-fashioned butt kicking right now by Milwaukee-Wisconsin at both ends of the floor. Another high-low, but it's an offensive foul. I believe they got Page pushing off there. It's because I called him Milwaukee, Wisconsin, instead of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. I threw them out of sync there. I did that. I jinxed them. I misspoke, and they got out of rhythm there. I'm sorry, fellas. That's three on Page, too. So that's significant now. Two of the big cogs for this Wisconsin, Milwaukee team have three fouls. Another turnover. They are just so out of sync, Butler. It doesn't look like the same team. Tucker. Cannot get it to go. And they are so eager to put this team away. Right now, they don't need much help because Butler's their one worst enemy. They just keep turning the ball over. Here comes another. Montserrat stumbles out of bounds, and he does turn it over. Jones. Underneath the page, he has it blocked by Cornette. 
Now Miller goes to the floor. Tucker gets it back. Nice pass. The three. Not there from Frederick. Well, you get the impression with the history of these two teams, Milwaukee should put them away while they have the chance because they keep giving them a chance to hang around on the beautiful move by Archie there. Eventually, they may get themselves back in the game. They have given themselves every chance to be ahead by 25, 30 points here, literally. And instead, still the same margin it was at halftime, 18. Nine points now for Darnell Archie. He leads Butler. But you're absolutely right. They've got to get Monterey involved offensively. Fournette has been basically invisible. Milky has it knocked out of his hands, and it's going to go to the Bulldogs. I tell you, the way they shoot threes, they, they are dangerous, even though they don't play an up-tempo game. You start thinking about coming back in chunks of three, you know, three good possessions, they're back in single digits, and then it gets to be a little bit nervous time. The problem has just been they can't seem to find the gap to get the open they guy to shoot the three. Because they are being overwhelmed with the great perimeter defense. That guy's largely responsible for it. You heard Jake Billis saying at halftime, Ronnie Jones has done a great job not giving anybody any breathing. We're literally, we're fight over screens. He's fought over three screens already. As you talk about, Bob, it's not even so much they're not making him, they're not even getting a chance to shoot Can't even get a look. Him. Can't even get a look. Archie going to try to go one-on-one. -on -one. Now Cornette. Under 10 on the shot clock, and Cornette gets just his second hoop of the game. That's the best they can get right now as a runner by Cornette because they can't get anything on the perimeter. But that's the first time, I don't know, is it all game? It's certainly in a long time where they put back-to-back -back baskets on the board. Again, the high-low, and this time it goes off Lettenberger. So another turnover for Wisconsin-Milwaukee, as you've said, Bob. Unable to totally put Butler away. We've told you about the history between these two. Bruce Pearl certainly knows it very well. They always seem to go down to the wire. We'll see if it happens here in Milwaukee. The NCAA Women's Championship Selection Special, Sunday at 5 on ESPN. Sports sedan with a supercharged compressor engine. To catch one, you gotta be in one. There's one more, right? With free checking from Bank of America. Yeah. Higher standards. Where'd you get that shirt? It's huge. It was my old boyfriend's. It must have been huge. He was. Why'd you change into one of mine? Nah, yours are kind of small. So? Well, small ones are okay. Huge ones just feel better. He has the tiniest little hands. Women's Big East final, Connecticut trailing at halftime. Villanova getting a good effort out of Trish Juline, who comes around the screen and knocks down the shot. But Connecticut has taken the lead. Here's Maria Tomlin with the triple. They just hit another one. And over on ESPN, too. Still a close game, though. Five-point Husky lead for the Big East championship. Dave, Bob? Okay, thanks a lot, Chris. Here our score, Wisconsin-Milwaukee by 16 as we listen in on Todd Licklider. Hey, you beat him two. Beat him two in uh, four minutes. Got to beat him a few more than that, all right? Now we got to beat him seven. Seven this, this next one, okay? I like that.
that. Good coaching. No accident why the guy's 51 and 10 in two years. Said that he has a plan for how you're going to try and overcome this 18 point deficit. Break the game into four minute segments. We had a win, probably all five of them. And they've already won the first one, but not by a big enough margin. They're going to try and make a little surge here, a little push. Win this segment by six or seven points, and all of a sudden, they're back in the game. That's the way he's delineated it for his team. No accident. The guy's got an 836 winning percentage in his two years. They are on an 8 2 run, making a 10 2 run now as Darnell Archie gets into double figures. And you saw the field goal drought for Wisconsin Milwaukee. What's unfortunate for Butler is they haven't been able to make more progress when the Panthers have gotten Well, forward. and I think that's what the sense was there. Hey, we're making progress. We could make more progress. That's what Todd Licklider was telling his team. And now all of a sudden, for the first time, there's a little sign of life by the team in white. And on the flip side, some struggles for Wisconsin Milwaukee. They are going to get the call here as Bruce Pearl's team will hang on to the basketball. But... Archie hobbling around at midcourt, got knocked around a little bit in that little melee. Makes his way back to guard Jones, but he is shaken up a bit. Well, Tucker tries to get inside. And Cornette's going to come out of there with it. Oh, that's a big time play by Cornette. That guy's throwing him off one at a time until he's finally out of men and had just the basketball left. So the lead is 14, and you get the sense of the building, the momentum shifting just and a bit. Sheets trouble. gets it to go. Trouble for Wisconsin. Milwaukee there. You can sense that they are playing with a little hop in their step. Butler, Sheets got the step. You can see the foul coming. He's beat his Weiss. And now the only hope if you're Bruce Pearl is he's going to miss this shot. It's definitely going to be a foul, but no such luck when momentum shifts. It's very hard to rein it back in. And suddenly, Todd Licklider's team's got a sign of life. He set a goal to win this segment by seven points, and he's already four up. Chance to go five up on this free throw. Sheets, a guy who is a freshman, but mature beyond his years. We saw the game-winning three hit just 10 days ago. Misses the free throw there, but I'll tell you, the players have really praised his ability and his composure in pressure games. As we take a look at the turnover story, and. Wisconsin Milwaukee starting to make some mistakes Bob. Yeah, that's the big thing you look at is the differential and that margin has gotten smaller and look at the Butler defense much quicker much more aggressive That's gonna be a walk. Yep, another turnover. They are definitely turning the game around just by being more active more assertive You get the feeling for the first time all night That Milwaukee is reacting to Butler and that's very much what has gotten them back in the ballgame here in the second half we'll Take a look the right, it's the right decision in the sense as the defense gets more aggressive, you want to try and drive it to the goal. You watch Winston try and take it to the basket, but just gets a turnover and a little frustration at the end of it to show for it. So now Butler with a chance to get this thing under 10 with a three-pointer. Remember, they trailed 14 to nothing in this game. They have never been in single digits since then. Different look. Not doing a weave. That was off a double ball screen, but a great defensive play. Boy, that is so important. When teams struggle, players' first thought is, how can I make a play offensively to help my team? The way to help your team is to do something away from the ball on the defensive end, on the glass. And you watch uh, Lettenberger with the great, great defensive anticipation, thinking that Cornette, in fact, is going to try and take it to the, to the hole. And he does. Beats him to the spot. Gets a turnover for his team. That's a big play, by the way. The glorified walk on. We talked about him. Again, that lava they've gotten nothing out of so far. It'll stay with Wisconsin Milwaukee. Don't forget, tomorrow, Championship Week continues. The Conagra Foods Big East Championship. First round action at noon. St. John's takes out Notre Dame, then at 2 Eastern. West Virginia and Providence Championship Week presented by 7 Up on ESPN and ESPN 2. The Irish losers of three of four down the stretch can need to win four in as many days. No one's ever done that in the Big East tournament. That tournament's always so great this year. Promises to be uh, as good as it's ever been. And an offensive foul here. Milwaukee really laboring. Butler did a great job defending that inbounds play. And then they get a turnover on the ensuing possession as you get a look at the Big East matchups. Oh, some, some good ones in that bunch. Huh? You already mentioned about St. John's Notre Dame. Georgetown Villanova. Villanova having to overcome this adversity late in the season. Seton Hall, which after that terrible start, got, got on a bit of a roll. Of course, some of the great surprises. We thought Boston College was going to put together the year they put together. West Virginia's been a great story, too. John Beeline doing a super job with that program. Boy, they got him chasing now. 
Archie misses the three. That foul was on Dylan Page, and that was his fourth. He is checked out of the game. Guy who averages more than 18 points per game for them. We'll see whether or not Butler's able to take advantage, but not if Lettenberger starts heating it up. He hits the three. He's come up with two huge plays. The walk-on drawing the foul on the other end, and then coming up with a three-pointer when they really needed it. Trying to oversell that charge a little bit. Well, that's way off. Sheets, good hustle. He knew it was off. He oh, that's confidence right there. <laughs> it's terrific confidence. The freshman missed wide right on his first one. Knew it was so far off, he ran to the spot where the rebound was before anybody could react and said, you know what? I'm happy to tee it up again, Rever. And he knocked it right down. And he talked about the maturity of Avery Sheets, and he certainly saw it right there. It is not afraid to take the big shot. Gets called for the foul there. That's his first. I've talked about how terrific these coaches are. This is a, a believe it or not, this is coaching. Because you know what? You teach your kids, if it's a good shot, it's a good shot. And that's a good shot for him. He can make that shot. So if the first one was far off, doesn't matter. The first one's got nothing to do with the second one. Son, that's a good shot for you. You take it. You're a 40% three-point shooter. He did. Made it. Now they're suddenly within 12 and with a lot of momentum. Ooh, no foul. That's a foul on Miller there. Frederick, out there. And this may get close yet, because right now, Butler has all the momentum. Bruce Pearl's team just has to weather the storm, because right now this Butler team is too good not to put together some kind of a run. The freshman Sheets nearly loses it there. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Nearly fouled as well. Now Miller trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Winston. They're using a lot of ball screens for the dribbler this half, more than they did the first half. Far more there. Double ball screen high now. Archie's going to have to create. And he does. Archie gets called for the offensive foul, though. Great job there by Rob Sanders drawing the charge. Well, that's got to be very encouraging for Bruce Pearl because as they get a little bit of momentum, you've got to have your guys be able to step up and get the job done defensively. You see deep in the shot clock, Archie's forced to make a play. And as he takes it to the basket, guys are taking numbers like in the deli to get a charge. They were all waiting for him. Good defensive possession for Milwaukee. Great contributions by the role players in this half, and it continues with Sanders hitting and drawing the foul. That's a guy who plays less than 10 minutes a game, averages less than two points per game, and he has really made an impact in the second half. Look at the ball movement, though. That's the versatility of this team, and especially of Clay Tucker, who goes down on the block in that flex set. Serves as a postman when he gets the ball. The defense reacts to him, and without a dribble, he spots the cutting Sanders. Sanders, again, finishes it with the heavy lifting done by the leader, Clay Tucker, who made the terrific delivery on the pass. No question about that. Sanders just a 38% free throw shooter. But he hits that one, so Wisconsin-Milwaukee has the lead back up to 15. It's 46-31. It's time to well, the time has finally come for us to see who's number one. Get out on the floor. It's all right to dance. We gon' crown the champion right here on ESPN. Sports sedan with a supercharged compressor engine. To catch one, you gotta be in one. Introducing the Seven Up Parade Balloon. It's gonna make people want the refreshing taste of Seven Up. And it's completely realistic. I even gave it a pull tab. No! Excuse me! Oh, Whoa! Someone must have shook the can! You gelling? No telling how much I'm gelling. You gelling? I'm gelling like a felon. Quit yelling. We're gelling. Right. Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles are so soft, they make any shoe feel outrageously comfortable. Are you gelling yet? Dr. Scholl's. It's Think Big Month at Sonning, featuring our biggest burger ever, the Big Cheese. Two beef patties, three slices of smoky cheddar cheese, topped with bacon and a special honey pepper sauce, and made to order. The Big Cheese. 
only at Sonic. Is it safe? Yeah, but hurry. This better be quick. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa, there's no way we can beat dollars rates. Hey, how are ya? Meeting's starting, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. Yes. Dollar.com? Yeah, from now on. I can't afford us. When it's your money you're spending, log on for our lowest rates at dollar.com. Championship week presented by 7-Up. The Horizon League title on the line with Scotts and Milwaukee up by 15 in front of a school record throng of more than 10,000. You see the largest home crowd in school history for Wisconsin Milwaukee at this arena, formerly known as the Mecca. Yeah, it's tough oh. to recognize without the floor. <laughs> Different look. I'll tell you what, though, that crowd is a testament to how good these teams are. You know, Bruce Pearl, if you joined us earlier, knows that uh, in his mind, he used it as a motivational tool, but the country doesn't know much about his program, and he used that as a selling point. He said they know Butler. Well, maybe they do, but I'm not even sure they know how good Butler has been. Four tournament championships. This is their sixth championship game in seven years. You mentioned earlier, ever seven consecutive 20-win seasons. Extraordinary coaching job by Todd Licklider, and now maybe they'll know about Milwaukee as well. What a wonderful job Bruce Pearl's done in his two years. Back-to-back -back Coach of the Year honors in this league. His team trying to carve some history for themselves tonight. First trip to the big dance in Division I. Montserrat missed the wide open three there. One of the rare wide open looks they've gotten. But he comes up with a steal on the other end. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, a team that truthfully no one does know a whole lot about outside maybe this state. As Sheets hits the three, the freshman continues to play very well. Nine points now for Sheets. But hey, Wisconsin, Milwaukee projected RPI of 51 coming into this one. Joe Lenardi had hit them as the second to last team out of the tournament. Were they to lose tonight? Only Minnesota ahead of them. So this is a team that has a legitimate plan at an at-large berth, but they want to leave nothing to chance. Great interior passing. Milky gets fouled and he'll go to the line. Beautiful passing, beautiful teamwork, spacing, unselfishness. So watch the, watch the decisions that are made without the dribble. Nice pass by Frederick. Nice pass around the defense when the help comes from Sanders. And then the foul drawn by Milky. That is team. That is a team that is comfortable, confident in their passing. And uh, both these teams are that way. You know, it's an amazing style. I'm not sure we mentioned this one yet, Reverend, that Butler has started the exact same starting lineup every single game, and it's the third year in a row they have done that. I, I don't know that I've ever heard a team do that for one year, let alone for three consecutive years. They have started the exact same players for the last game of the year as they did the first game. That's amazing. That's a testament to, frankly, a program that has established itself, and we've gone full circle. That's why there's so many people here to see these two teams going at it tonight. The lead back up to 14. Cornette trying to create. Gets it to go, and he's going to the line. Well, in fits and starts, Reverend, they're finding a way to claw at it. They get it to 14, goes to 16, they get it to 12, they go back to 14. Now, if he makes this, as you watch Cornette, this is what he's been able to do, especially going right. He's put the ball hard going right. He hasn't really got much going to his left, but he makes this. They'll have it to 11. They'll have made a point back in that transition. That is four on Nate Milky. Dylan Page also has four fouls. So those really are their two big guys inside. And that explains why Cornette's taking it right at it. Yeah, we'll see if they're able to get their press set up. They'll be able to play quicker, smaller, but quicker. We will see. The danger in that is you're open for threes. Threes obviously are right in Butler's alley. Cornette missing the free throw. And then the foul on Lightfoot. Number three on Dwayne Lightfoot. But again, both the big guys right now for Wisconsin Milwaukee are on the bench. So we'll see if Butler is able to use that opportunity and make some sort of a run. Well, there's the graphic showing you the foul trouble for Milwaukee. And you remember during the uh, last time out, Todd Licklider challenged his team, let's win the next segment by seven, meaning he, at that point they were down by 16. He wanted to get it to nine. My guess is if he can get it to single digits with nine plus minutes it's gonna feel like these guys have a chance the way they shoot threes Bruce Pearl's got to be delighted the way his team has traded punches and sparred they have not given up the big run to allow the Bulldogs to get back in it 
like the issue may be who was fouled on that play. I think that's what they're discussing as to who ought to go to the line because Jones seems to be pleading his case. And uh, they were going to come over and use our monitor, you know, because that monitor wasn't working earlier. I was looking forward to visiting with the officials, but apparently they've got it fixed now. They don't, they don't need us. I feel left out of the whole process. Again, we were talking about Wisconsin, Milwaukee. This is a team as we take a look at this again, Bob. Well, let's see. Well, there's no question. It's Jones. If that's what they're trying to figure out, it's Jones who gets to go to the line. And ultimately, that's what it's going to be. Well, you know, and I'm a big fan of using the video monitor replay for that purpose. There's no reason to get a call that's so easily preventable wrong. And in this case, it's significant. Jones is almost an 80% foul shot. If he's got a chance to go to the line, you want to send him to the line. It's the first one. He's had a nice game. He's done a good job defensively. He's hit a couple of timely threes. Had a solid game, and now a chance to get in uh, double figures with this one. Brandon Miller checking in for Butler. Transfer from Southwest Missouri State. He grew up in Steve Alford's hometown of Newcastle. And Always idolized Alford, wanted to play for Alford, went to Southwest Missouri State, was with him for one year. When Alford went to Iowa, he came here to Butler. Now the turnover, Jones unable oh, to come up hustle. with a great hustle by Sheets, who has been everywhere, frankly. Cornette now unable to convert on the other end, though. And it's going to go to the Panthers. Well, that's one of those things that you can't coach that. That's just players making the hustle play, making the effort, finding a way. Here's an unfortunate problem. For Sheets, who slips, but then great hustle by Lightfoot getting on the floor, Jones getting on the floor, and out of that melee, wound up in the hands of Cornette, but Milwaukee hustles back and prevents the layup. Miller trying to draw the charge on the baseline. Instead, he gets called for the block. Tonight, championship week continues with two conference finals on ESPN and ESPN2. Following our game on ESPN, it's Middle Tennessee State and Western Kentucky. That's the Sun Belt Conference Championship game. On ESPN2, also at 9 Eastern, the Mid-Continent Conference Championship. It's Valpo and IUPUI. That's Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Championship week presented by 7UP on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. We're talking about the consistency of Butler. How about Valpo, also in the state of Indiana, ninth 21 season in 10 years. Yeah, there's some terrific, quote unquote, mid-majors. That was a good guy to foul in that situation in the one-on-one. -on -one. Sanders just a 38% foul shooter, and he misses, and it turns into a, essentially a turnover for Milwaukee. And Butler's got to find some go-to play to get a good look. Oh, that's a terrific job by Cornette, and they got no shot out of it. Now, Montserrat really doesn't seem particularly confident out there. It's too Had a bad. little trouble getting a hold of it. Now, Miller, the long three that nearly goes. Cornette almost got the rebound. Cornette actually had a layup, kicked it out for the three to Montserrat, who's a good three-point shooter, 38%. And as you said, he's not in any kind of a rhythm. Just not able to get the handle, and a golden opportunity lost for Butler. Travel. It is a travel on Ronnie Jones. Wisconsin Milwaukee as we mentioned has never been to the NCAA tournament at Division one on the Division one level they did in fact make it to the Division two elite eight back in the 80s but this is their 13th year of playing a full Division one schedule trying to get into the NCAA Division one tournament for the first time you sit next to an old Division two coach you want to be <laughs> specific on that well especially because I think it shows you get guys who had great success at the non division one level sometimes they can duplicate it there's a foul on Miller great team defense by Milwaukee what a terrific job they are just running guys at him who are smothering in that case it was Winston with the great defense watch Winston trying to push him left not gonna let him go right gets the good position Miller tries to lean in and draw the foul nothing there then when Tucker comes up with it Miller out of a little bit of frustration, trying to make the hustle play, commits the foul, and that turns into a one-on-one -on -one for Tucker. Great defensive play, but I want to go back to that. Bruce Pearl spent nine years at the Division II level and averaged 26 wins a year. Averaged 26 wins a year. Won the national championship. He had a record of 238 and 46 at the Division II level. And he certainly has earned an opportunity at this level and shown, you know what, still five guys, hoops still 10 feet away. Good coaching is good coaching, and he's had a great run here as well. 
Tucker misses the free throws. The fourth foul on Miller, so you saw him take a seat on the bench. And just to dovetail what you're saying about Pearl, in the last 17 years, he has been to the NCAA tournament at the level he's coaching at 15 times. That's, that's strong. Off the turnover, Jones. Partially blocked, they get it back, and now Jones out of bounds, so it's going to go to Butler. Well, you know what you got to do with Bo Ryan? All you got to do is look at guys who have done that at, quote unquote, lower profile or Division II schools, had the opportunity. Bruce Pearl, very animated guy, and I say this not uh, for any reason other than it's a fact. He is doing what he did at the Division II level. It's the same system. Obviously, you put wrinkles in depending on your personnel, but it's a sound, solid system. He's a great motivator. He's a great strategist, and it's working at this level. And I know there are, you know, small college guys around the country going, right on, brother. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right, though. There's so many programs that are obsessed with getting a Division I coach. And you look at this state, you mentioned Bo Ryan. How about Dick Bennett? He did a great job and then moved up to Wisconsin Green Bay after the success that he had at Stevens Point and then taking Wisconsin all the way to the final four. Absolutely. Good. Those are perfect examples. A foul That's away a foul. from the ball. It's offensive on Lettenberger. We take a look at the teams that are already in. We told you about Wisconsin Milwaukee trying to get in. Butler perhaps will end up on the bubble. You see. The clubs that have made it, including Creighton last night. And the dynasty of Fran Dunphy at Penn. What a yeah. remarkable job he has done there. Tremendous. San Diego getting in last night, putting Gonzaga now on the bubble. And as the guys talked about in the studio off the top, you're going to have a lot of mid-majors on the bubble. And you're going to have some of the big boys a little nervous because that means an extra team's going from the mid-ragers, not making them very happy. Cornette really trying to take over. Oh, but my. he gets called for the offensive foul. And I don't know about that one. I'd be interested to see that one again. Wow, let's take a look. From our angle, it doesn't look that way, but let's take a look the other way. Ooh. Your call, Bob? He, uh, he can't believe it, and quite candidly, neither can I. That's, uh, that's our call for charge. <laughs> Tend to agree with you. Third foul on Cornette. Tucker working hard to get free on the block. Look at him working low. He's trying to take advantage of what he thinks is a matchup on Sheets. Good team defense by Butler won't let it get in there. Now they get back into flex and get some rotation. Now Tucker misses that one. It goes off the hands of Cornette. It's going to stay with the Panthers. Tucker still scoreless in the second half, but it hasn't really mattered. Wisconsin-Milwaukee still up by 13 as we send it back to Chris Fowler and the gang in our college basketball studios. Guys. Guys, Connecticut women winning streak standing at 70, entering tonight's Big East final against Villanova with Courtney Mix mixing it up. Nicole Drunken Miller knocks down the triple. Then the go-ahead bucket for the Wildcats. Mix drives the hoop and the foul. Another three by Drunken Miller. Villanova over on ESPN2 trying to close out UConn and snap the streak at 70. We'll be back after this. There's a place that I travel when I want to roam, and nobody knows it but me. The roads don't go there, and the signs stay home, and nobody knows it but me. It's far, far away, and way, way afar. It's over the moon and the sea. And wherever you're going, that's wherever you are. And nobody knows it but me. The powerful Chevy Tahoe, like a rock. On Selection Sunday, the choice is ESPN. At 5, the women's bracket. At 6, Sports Center with the men's bracket, plus all the day sports news. At 7, Bracketology 101, presented by Staples. If you're filling out a bracket on Selection Sunday, start here. As cool as the other side of the pool. Chili's to go in college hoops. Tune into college basketball on ESPN and ESPN2. Hi, I'm John Feinstein, author of The Last Amateurs. I hope you'll join me Friday nights this winter for Patriot League Basketball on DirecTV Channel 611.
So join me and all my friends Friday nights this winter for Patriot League Basketball on DirecTV Channel 611. At DirecTV, we've got something extra for everyone. The Total Choice Plus package adds over 15 additional channels to Total Choice, all for just a few dollars more, bringing you more adventure, more laughs, more exploration, more music, and more entertainment choices for everyone in the family. Action! Over 130 channels in all, including local channels. Total Choice Plus. It's an easy and affordable way to get more out of your DirecTV. Visit DirecTV.com or call 1-800-DIRECTV and order today. There is Tommy Gunn of Middle Tennessee State trying to unload on Western Kentucky Hilltoppers on their home floor. The Sun Belt title game is coming up next, guys. That is, that is the best name well, in the country. Close. St. Francis, Pennsylvania, back some 20 years ago, had a guard named Napoleon Lightning. I always thought that for a point guard is pretty good. Napoleon Lightning at the point, Tommy Gunn at the shooting guard. That's pretty, pretty strong. Well, majestic map has just been trumped. <laughs> because Tommy Gunn is a heck of a name. Wisconsin, Milwaukee up by 13. Looking to get to the big dance for the first time ever. And then Lee Butler at 25 and five and having to play the waiting game for the second straight year. Lettenberg has it blocked from behind. Through the lane though, Ronnie Jones. Uh, he's made plays, players make plays. That's nothing you coach there. It's great, great effort, great anticipation and he finishes it. Jones has done a lot of that. The story, if this stays the way it is, though, is going to be the defense of Milwaukee. What a job. Even as their offense has faltered a bit, they made some turnovers this half. The defense continues to get the job done for them. It Three is. of 14 shooting, excuse me, behind the arc for Butler. I'm sorry about that, Bob. It is exactly, exactly what Bruce Pearl orchestrated in practice. I mean, this game has gone to a T the way he designed it. Except for the fact he's got two guys on the bench with four fouls. That's what, you know what? That is uh, the, the only way he could defend Cornette was to be physical and to, to bang a little bit. And it's an un unfortunate byproduct for him, but part of the game plan. Jones gets fouled on the way up, so he is going to the line. I think it's Lightfoot. That's four on Dwayne Lightfoot. Wisconsin Milwaukee up by 15 with the Horizon League Championship on the line. It's Championship Week presented by 7 Up. Wisconsin Milwaukee in the yellow, Butler in the white. Dave Remsen and Bob Valvano with you in Milwaukee. You know what, Reverend, just to put it in perspective, when you hold this team to three made three point field goals, keep in mind that they have four guys on the roster who've tried more than 100. I don't know that I've ever, I've been around some teams that have taken a lot of threes. That's a lot of three point attempts, and you're not going to let them shoot it unless they make a good percentage. So if you hold that team, that kind of team, to just three made field goals. As I said, if you want to put a, a, a finger on one reason for the lead, it's got to be the perimeter defense of the Panthers. Terrific. All right, we're going to send it now to Chris Fowler with some breaking news in our studios. Chris? Well, just the major, major upset in the making over on ESPN2. Villanova has the basketball. They have a four-point lead just inside of 40 seconds to go trying to snap Connecticut's Overall win streak at 70, Big East tournament streak at 29, and streak of titles at 9. We'll keep it posted. It's over on ESPN2. Okay, thanks a lot, Chris. Here, Mike Montserrat just hit a three-pointer, so it's a 14-point lead for the Panthers. Good patience, good spacing. Look at the spread for Milwaukee. Not giving Butler a chance to trap or create turnovers. They're going to run the shot clock deep every possession right now, under 10. Now they'll probably let Jones try and create off a screen. Here comes the screen. Lettenberger. Jones gets it off. Does not get it to go, but they get the offensive board, and Sanders misses down low. So that's all right. They nearly well, had a perfect possession. Yeah. Got the shot clock right all the way here. down and score. Got the first half of it. They're running the shot clock down. And Right now, obviously, the clock is Wisconsin-Milwaukee's ally. As long as they can keep defending the three, it is. Nice Monster pass. Ray, nice feed for Cornette. Well, he's a terrific pass at Cornette. Sometimes it takes his teammates by surprise, though. I'm not sure Lightfoot was looking for the ball there. Dr. Stelson scored in the second half. Hasn't really mattered. Dishes it off right there. Lettenberger gets points numbers five and six for him. They haven't been able to solve this defense. And that's been the key. Swarming to the ball. The kick's going to reset the shot clock. 
As we remind you that tomorrow championship week continues the Niagara Foods Big East Championship. First round action at New York, St. John's and Notre Dame. Then it's West Virginia and Providence at two. Both those games are tomorrow championship week. Presented by 7UP on ESPN and ESPN2. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Keep in mind that Bruce Pearl's team goes to a 14-0 lead. And so, and they are lead it now by 16, which means they've effectively just sparred for the better part of 30 minutes. And that's a tribute to their defense. They haven't been able to put a run together. Butler, because of the great defense on the walk. Cornette, going have a foul on the floor. It's a block. It's going to go against Rob Sanders. Don't forget, coming up next, the Sun Belt title on the line. Middle Tennessee State against Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers, just an amazing story this year of perseverance. That's coming up next here on ESPN as soon as we're done. People talking about Dennis Feltman as a possible national coach of the year. That's what an extraordinary job he's done there. Putting that gaudy record up amidst injury and depleted roster. Terrific job. Cornette missing at the line. Now Jones on the other end. And they are smelling it here in Milwaukee. The lead up to 18. Amazing that they have not let Butler get it. We went in single digits the whole half. The three is not there. Cornette comes out of there with the board. Back up and in. It was goaltender, but it went in anyway. That's what it'll be. So count the basket for Cornette, which you would have counted anyway, because as you said, it went in. Eight points for Cornette, who we highlighted off the top. It hasn't been a great game for him offensively, although he's done a lot of little things well. He hasn't had much room to operate because they haven't been able to stretch the defense by making any threes. So when he's gotten it, he's gotten it in uh, awkward positions frequently. And, ha and he has missed some shots that he can make. But on the other end, Clay Tucker has been all that's been advertised and more. Great passing, terrific shooting, leadership, getting his teammates involved. He has been... The star, as he should have been, as the part of our star walk. Remarkably, hasn't scored in the second half, trying to change that right here. Instead, leaves it for Page. He misses, but the walk-on Lettenberger tips it in. Yeah, but again, Tucker's the one that made it happen. He made the defense react to him. Once they started helping, as the crowd comes to their feet, you talk about sensing it. They can taste it now. Avery Sheets has been really impressive. 11 points now for the freshman, Tucker. Good patience. Patrick Good decision. Heady team. Right now the clock is more important than taking that initial three. But I guess it's uh, only justice that the senior Frederick, who unselfishly cast up the three, despite the fact he hasn't scored yet tonight, now will get a chance to get in the books because he draws the foul. The foul's going to go against Lewis Curry. That is number two on him. Frederick, the classic gym rat. He's a guy who actually had the key to the gym in high school. <laughs> the janitor had to kick him out at night. Loves to shoot. Again, I said earlier, models this game after Chris Kingsbury, who used to shoot from the Hawkeye logo <laughs> in Carver Hawkeye well, Arena. This we watched him in warm -ups shooting from right in front of us out here about a third of the way up the floor. As he said, yet to score tonight, and he rolls that one home. Let's go to Chris Fowler. All right, David, that women's Big East final, Villanova is the team on the free throw line. They lead Connecticut by two on ESPN2, 13 seconds to play. We will keep you posted. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. So a lot of drama, obviously, there. Here, not quite as much drama, but a lot of excitement over a program that was dead in the water five years ago, and they are on the verge of going to the dance with Scottsdale, Milwaukee up by 18. The key to outdoor advertising, location. So I put my 7-Up billboard where people spend all their time outdoors, at a ski resort. Ooh! Now that's a billboard with stopping power. Yeah. Powerful new Silverado is here. Still available with the 340 horse Vortec V8. Okay. Let's have
take Chris's buddy. You play that? Why not? Look up, see blue, Labatt Blue. Anniversary V Rod. Claim yours before they're gone. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7 Up and your local 7 Up bottler. Make 7 Up yours. And in part by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, long lasting trucks on the road. It is over. The Big East Women's Final, Villanova 2003 Conference Championships also over. One of the great win streaks in college basketball history. Connecticut's 70 game streak and streak of nine consecutive conference championships, 29 consecutive Big East Tournament games all ended. Of course, there are certain top seed for the NCAA Tournament, but Nova has won the Big East crown. Guys, back to you, Milwaukee. So a stunner there, Chris. Not a stunner here. Actually, Wisconsin-Milwaukee was favored in this game. They haven't lost at home all year. But the margin, Bob Valvano, is certainly stunning. It is uh, a stunner in a lot of ways. It's stunning the margin. It's stunning the fact that Butler's only got 43 points with a little more than three minutes to go in the game. I think that there are uh, a lot of raised eyebrows between these two teams that rarely play a game that doesn't go down to the last possession. This game hasn't been within 10 points since about the two-minute mark in. And to me, this just points out the depth of this league. People know about Butler. Speaking of depth, Archie <laughs> from the Illinois line hits the three. Where did Archie live? Riverdale? That was from Riverdale, I think. That was uh, a comic book Archie, anyway. He's another Newcastle guy. This Archie. Hometown is smart. Steve Alford. Smart, smart, smart. Ooh. Call timeout. It is going to be a timeout called by Bruce Pearl's crew, so we'll take a timeout as well. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, two minutes and 41 seconds away from its first ever NCAA attorney appearance. Stood the bowl. Okay, see how Sweat the inside. side of the rails warm more than the other side? Felt like a million. Felt like number one. What are you handing down to your kids? Chevy, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. When Jeff and Sharon's baby arrived, they knew their needs would change overnight. They need a bigger house, maybe a minivan. And what about college? What they didn't know was I could help. Now the same State Farm agent who helped you plan for just in case can help you with what could be with auto loans, mortgages, even college funding. Minivan. For help with banking, insurance, and investing, talk to your agent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Can I write a check? Yo. 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 Can I write a check? Yo. 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 Can I write a check? Yo. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. Yo. Gee. Yo, gee. Yo. The biggest stars. <laughs> the best music. <laughs> and that's no bull. The show gets weirder every night. Jimmy Kimmel Live. Late night, weeknights on ABC. Only in America, what a guy. You think you're ready for this? This is the show, Rook. This isn't about stats, it's about guts, instinct, and knowing the slugging percentage of a career platoon player with a knack for clutch dingers. Warm up the modem, Sparky. ESPN Fantasy Baseball. Sign up today on ESPN.com. Mike Wells, one of four senior starters for Western Kentucky Hilltoppers on their home floor, playing for the auto bid from Sun Belt against Middle Tennessee State just minutes from now, guys. 
Wisconsin-Milwaukee on its home court, up by 15. That obviously the story here. The story behind the story, though, what will happen to the Butler Bulldogs? Remember last year, they became the poster child for the snub mid-major. RPI of 75, they were 25 and five. Beat Indiana, beat Purdue, beat a ranked Ball State team, did not get in. This year, the RPI much better, Bob Valvano, 35 projected off collegerpi.com. Might drop a little bit, obviously, with the loss here to Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Joe Lenardi, who projects the brackets for us on ESPN.com, told me today, regardless of what happens to Butler, they're in as Lightfoot hits for them to cut this one to 13. What's your take? Well, the, there are some significant things on the resume. Take a look at that. The RPI much better than it was last year. 25 and 4. They're playing well at the end of the year. You look at 9 and 1 since February 1st. And quite frankly, even though they say that it goes from year to year and past years don't count, the established success of this program has to count for something. The thing I think that works against them is last year they didn't get in with, frankly, much more marquee wins. You talked about the teams they beat last year. No disrespect to Western Kentucky, who's got a fine ball club, but that's the game they point to as the marquee win this year. There really is no attention grabber that makes you say, oh, yeah, wow, look at that one. They had those last year, and they still didn't get in, so I'm afraid it's going to be a, an unsettling few days for, for Butler and arguably some people's opinions unjustifiably, but we shall see because uh, this certainly is not the outcome they had hoped for this evening. Don't forget the Sun Belt final coming up next. Middle Tennessee State against Western Kentucky as soon as we are done here on ESPN. Getting back to what you were talking about, the flip side is last year they had some bad losses, Butler did. This year, no bad losses. That's a good point. All their losses, four of them on the road against teams that are combined 52 and 3 at home. Hawaii, Wisconsin, Milwaukee is. Tucker throws it down and draws the foul. He is going to the line, and they are celebrating in Milwaukee. Well, and uh, Sheets going to add to flip-flop the cliche injury to Enzel. He got hurt on this. Not sure how, but what a good finish. That's how many people have that seat in the building. Over Cornette, a good finish by Tucker. And Avery Sheets at the uh, standing by midcourt. He got banged. So I didn't. I was trying to watch the play over to see where he got hit. But he clearly got injured somehow. So 20 points now for Clay Tucker. Getting back to the point we were talking about. Those four losses. Teams that combined 52 and three at home. And if you add in this one, which we're going to assume obviously that this is going to be a loss for Butler as well. It's 13 and 0 at home for Wisconsin Milwaukee. So you do the math there. It's 65 and three at home. Those are their five losses. Wisconsin Milwaukee twice, Hawaii, Duke, and Loyola. That's the difference. No bad losses this year for Butler. That is a really significant point as we got a terrific look at the finish there by Tucker. Good strong finish over Cornette. Tucker misses the free throw. Nowhere near his career high, by the way. He hit 40 in a game against Wright State this year. That's, they'll give that one. They will let you have that one. Bruce Pearl says you can have all the twos you want. Not getting any threes, though. Not enough time to beat us with twos. Well, easy play. You don't want to start going crazy because 13 points against the team that shoots like this Butler team with a minute 44. You're not out of the woods yet. Uh, and... and Need we state it again to state the obvious? This Butler team doesn't put the record they put on the board of 25 and 4 by laying down. They are not about to throw in the towel this time on the clock. They've got shooters in the lineup. They'll keep playing. Again, the Sun Belt final coming up as soon as we're done here in Milwaukee. Middle Tennessee State against Western Kentucky. We talked about the great story with Western Kentucky this year. An unfortunate story, of course, with Chris Marcus getting hurt. He was going to be their big star. Yet they have persevered and they find themselves playing for a berth in the NCAA tournament. Well, you know, I, I think that if they get in, uh, you know, to what degree that that makes a difference for, for Butler's case. But again, it would be, you know, their, their marquee win, if you will, would be over an NCAA team. I think to go full circle with that discussion, though, you make the most compelling argument. That is looking at the losses from last year. We spent too much time, or I did anyway, looking at it and saying, boy, look at the people they beat last year. They don't have anything like that this year. But you're right. You got to look at the other side. Where did the four losses come from? Boy, they came from <laughs> very, very formidable opponents this year, and they did not, you know, they held serve every other game they needed to. That should be rewarded. So, 
And it was interesting, we had a conference call earlier this week with Jim Livingo, who's the head of the selection committee, and Butler came up. And I said, what would you do with Butler if they came up as an at-large again this year? Would last year be a consideration? He said, look, we're just looking for the best 34 at-large teams, period. And you look at the resume and you look at the RPI, although he emphasized that's just one tool, but Todd Licklider talked about the RPI yesterday and how much higher it is this year than last year. They went and played at Duke this year. Now they lost by 20, but Maryland lost by 21 at Duke last year and won the national championship. So there's no shame in losing by 20 points at Duke. I think you would agree, would you not, that the general fan would like to see Butler in the tournament. Don't you think so? Don't you think that there is still some ill will so. from what went on last year? And again, even though I know for the third time we're saying it, last year's got nothing to do with this year. Again, I'm just talking about as a consensus. I think the, the average basketball fan would like to see them in the tournament. And remember, too, and I agree with you, and to take nothing away from Wisconsin-Milwaukee, but Butler won the regular season in the conference tournament, and it was due to a prearranged uh, agreement as we take a look again. Our next game, Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky coming up next, the Sun Belt Final a prearranged agreement that said that Wisconsin-Milwaukee would host this game if they were in it. So Wisconsin-Milwaukee was supposed to host the entire tournament. They made a bit of a format change. They took the top two teams and put them automatically through to the semifinals. The agreement then was most Wisconsin-Milwaukee would host if they were in it this year. Butler has the same agreement next year. So they had to go on the road even though they are the better seed. Well, that's a good point. You know, they and their, at their place, they won the game. These two teams split the regular season meetings, each winning on their home court. So you could make the case, since both of them were undefeated at home, that the deciding factor here is playing on the road, despite the fact that if you were going to go by seed, they should have been hosting the game. So you're right. That's that's a factor. I don't think there's any question about that. Now, it's just going to be fascinating to see. Well, and also, by the way, the next week. people wondering why they make that rule. They gave the top two seeds a bye all the way through to semifinals. You could call it the Butler rule it is because Butler. last year, yep. after that terrific regular season, they go out in the first round, which is an aberration for them. They've had not only great regular season success, they've had a great run in the tournament. There are a lot of guys slipping tonight as they've gone to plant. I don't know if there's moisture on the floor, but that's about the fourth time we've seen that. Now Ronnie Jones gets fouled, so he is going to go to the line. That's third foul on Darnell Archie, and you hear the crowd once again coming to its feet, a standing ovation. You cannot say enough about the job that Bruce Pearl has done here. And they were talking yesterday, Clay Tucker said, a few years ago when he was a freshman, they were getting 300 fans, literally, for their home games. Yeah, tonight there were 500 fans out here two hours and 15 minutes before the game waiting for Bruce Pearl to give a pep talk. So it's uh, 10,000 plus in the house tonight. An incredible story, and it's about to have a great ending for Wisconsin-Milwaukee as Jones puts the first one through. I got news for you. You don't want to play either of these teams in the first round of the NCAA tournament. I'm assuming Butler gets there. The way they shoot it, and this Bruce Pearl's gang has got a, a lot of different weapons to throw at you. It's a 17-point lead. Miller... Cuts it to 15. Again, though, Bruce has decided all the twos you want. Not going to get anything behind the line. Now Page going to throw it down. Trade baskets till the cows come home. That'd be fine with the team in yellow. That's all they're doing right now. They have been the Wisconsin Normal School Normals, the Wis Milwaukee State Teachers College Green Goals, the Wisconsin State College Milwaukee Green Goals, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Cardinals, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Panthers. They have never been an NCAA Division I tourney team, but thanks in part to Dylan Page, they're about to be. Easy finish on the break as they handled Butler's press. Butler's not a pressing team. They don't really want to do it. What would your mascot be if you're the normal? You have a very, just a very normal-looking guy? Or it's an average show. It's an average guy who walks in and really do anything? I'm in not fact, sure. you wouldn't even know who the mascot is. <laughs> <That's a, that's laughs> who's the mascot? Uh, I don't know. He's in, somewhere up there. He's just a, he's a normal, just a normal guy. Sun Belt final up next. Middle Tennessee State and Western Kentucky. Jones, the little floater. This one is academic at this point, and the question is going to become, Butler now sitting on the bubble as they did last year as well. They'll have to wait it out for another painful week. Gonzaga playing the same game. Southern Illinois playing the same game. So much of it going to depend, Bob, on what happens in some of the bigger conference tournaments. For all of them, they're, they're undermined by some of their own upsets. If only a, one or two of them had managed to win. But now there's going to be so many of those bubble teams having to sweat it out. 
It's, it's a bad scenario for the uh, the mid majors. 107 years of basketball, and for the first time ever, the Wisconsin Milwaukee Panthers will play in the NCAA Division I tourney. They are the Horizon League champions. <laughs> Pandemonium reigns as well it should. Congratulations to the Panthers. So Wisconsin Milwaukee wins at 69-52 for Bob Palvano. I'm Dave Reps, and now let's go to the Sunbelt Championship. Rod Franklin and Larry Conley. I would like to welcome everybody.